This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Uh, January 3rd, 1989, Rick Martell is back. And he's going to pick up a win over Barry Horowitz with the Boston Crab in two minutes and 44 seconds in good old Huntsville, Alabama. He's going to wrestle Mr. Perfect to a time limit draw in primetime wrestling that airs on February 6th. And as we build towards WrestleMania five, he's still staying in these singles matches. But then on April 2nd at WrestleMania strike force reunites for the first time in 10 months. But of course, unfortunately they're defeated by the brain busters. And there's a, a pretty interesting moment late in the bout Martel walks out on his partner Santana after accidentally hitting him with the flying forearm. And after the contest, Gene Okerlund does a backstage interview with Martel about his actions. And Martel claims he was just sick of Santana trying to ride his coattails, which is kind of funny because they haven't even teamed together for 10 months, but I guess we're not supposed to remember that. But this storyline or this little angle at WrestleMania five, I remember like it was yesterday because I used to wear this tape out. It was a big moment in both of their careers, even though they hadn't been teaming. What can you tell us about how we got there with that idea? Well, the idea was really one of Pat Patterson's and thinking that Martell being an arrogant heel um, would work. So it's like, okay, let's let's bring him back. People did remember Strike Force. And if you're going to turn heel, turn heel on a popular babyface, the likes of a Tito Santana, someone that everyone loved right. and would care about. So reunite the team and then have Martel walk. And to your point, kind of the ridiculousness of, you know, Rick, you, I've carried you on my coattails. Rick, you've been gone for six months or what have you. Right. So it, it just, uh, it was a lot easier transition and it put Rick right into a program with Tito. They had chemistry and had great matches. Yeah. The promo afterwards, you're lucky that being the gentleman that I am, I just walked off. That could have been a lot worse for you, Tito Santana. And it's kind of fun because I think Rick did an interview once where he said that Vince and Pat didn't really see him as a heel. They thought no one would buy it. And Martel says he even threatened to quit if Vince wouldn't at least let him try it. And he even gave his notice. And a few days later, he gets a call from Vince and Pat and they're a little more willing. Uh, so he, they get him to come to TV, but they want him to do baby face promos again. So he tries to quit again. This time Vince calls him at home and they come to an agreement that he'll turn heel, but Vince says he needs a gimmick and Martel says, well, I hadn't really thought about that. This is something that has always fascinated me when one of the boys sort of puts their foot down and says, nope, that's not what I want for my character. I mean, famously, allegedly, uh, Sid is in a meeting once with Vince and says something like, or hears, Hey, I want you to be my next Hulk Hogan. And apparently Sid's like, ah, I'd rather be a heel. And that just, I don't know, amazes me. Like what a prime spot. Why do you think Martel felt so strongly that he wanted to be a heel? And if he couldn't get it, he was going to quit. He wanted to be a heel. Cause he, I don't think he'd ever been a heel before. Right. And it was a challenge to him. It was something that he felt he could pull off with the personal issue with Tito and look, who doesn't want to be a heel? I mean, being a heel is just so much easier than and it's than being a baby face. Well, he's going to submit this heel turn on April 22nd when he's introduced to slicks latest protege. Of course, in this era of the company, if you're a bad guy, you've got a manager from there. Of course, he's feuding with Tito over the next year, losing to him in the finals of the 89 King of the ring tournament in October in Rhode Island. And as 89 comes to a close, the decision is made to end Martell's association with slick. Talk about why you thought slick was the right guy. And ultimately why there was a separation. It had run its course. And I don't know that slick did, uh, really anything positive for Martell. It was a a pairing to let everyone know that Martel's now a heel because he has a heel manager. And it just, to me, it just didn't work. Plus the idea of the, of the model kind of had started to form. Man. I absolutely fucking love 
this model character. Before we get into it, though, I do want to mention the November 23rd Survivor Series in 89. It's Dusty Rhodes, Brutus Beefcake, Tito Santana, and the Red Rooster on one side. Big Boss Man, Honky Tonk Man, Bad News Brown, and Rick Martell on the other. Man, that's a lot of talent. A lot of Hall of Famers and Red Rooster. There you go. Around the same time, Martel starts to position himself as a fashion model and he's even referred to as fashion model, Rick Martel. And he appears on the interview stage wearing clothing, some fancy suited and booted gear here. And Lord Alfred Hayes is going to describe this beautiful attire in his very British tone of voice. And, uh, during the appearances, Martel's coat was cut up by Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and that sets the two of them up for a program in early 90. And somewhere along the way, they drop the word fashion and just start referring to him as the model. And Martel even admits at first he wasn't sold on the idea, but his wife reminded him at least it's not a rooster. That gimmick was already taken, and somebody flubbed it. What did you think of uh, the model? I absolutely love the vignettes. We just saw some of those. Uh, on a bonus show that you and I watched a Saturday night's main event, but dude, this is great stuff. I love the character. I can't believe he was even remotely hesitant. Yeah. Uh, the character was great and the build up and the vignettes and everything else about it were great. And it gave Rick something to sink his teeth into, uh, the accent comes across as very arrogant and, and he could talk down his nose at people. Um, little in, insight to the model that in the beginning, and actually all through it, uh, Martel wore a lot of Vince's old suits and had them, you know, Vince gave him suits that were very similar in body type and Martel had them tailored to fit himself and so when you go back and you look and some of the shit that Martel was wearing and especially in the, the suit department were from Vince McMahon. Well, how about that? Uh, January, we get the Royal rumble. Martel's got another dig in on San- Tito Santana by helping eliminate him. And, uh, Santana was attempting to throw Martel out of the ring, but of course, ultimately warrior would be the guy to eliminate Martel. He's still working Brutus Beefcake on house shows, but he never interacts with him on pay-per-view besides Survivor Series 89. I guess this is just that different era where you really made your money setting up house show matches, right? Live events was the bread and butter. That's That was your business model, and pay-per-views were a special event. But you spent your television time and everything else building up to the live event model. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. 